This is a Main Hustle Media Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Jackie O and you're listening to Militantly Mixed. Yo, this is Rashani from the Single Simulcast. And when I'm not making you laugh or making up parody songs, I'm kicking back. Listening to Militantly Mixed. I would like to acknowledge that the Militantly Mixed podcast is recorded on the traditional lands of the Karankawa people, and I wish to pay my respects to the people of that nation, both past and present. Hey y'all, welcome to Militantly Mixed, the podcast about race and identity from the mixed race perspective. I am your host, Charmaine, aka Mixed Auntie Maine. The busiest mixed race bisexual polyamorous atheist comic book nerd cat mom mask making Gulf Coast Cosmos comic book co owning Asian American Podcasters Association's Golden Crane Award winning podcaster, auntie podcaster in this podcasting game. This is episode 148, and this is the rebirth of Maine, I guess, um, because I did make the switch last week from all of the social media and as many things as I can remember putting Mixed Girl Maine on to my new and what feels more correct moniker, Mixed Auntie Maine, A-U-N-T-I-E, because that's how we do. Um, I have been talking about it a little bit on the show, but I'm going to go more in depth about the real reason behind my gender stuff on my other show, By Furious. Um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. So I won't get into it too much here, but basically I was concerned about the branding a little bit and I made the branding bigger in my head with changing over from Mix Girl Maine to Mix Auntie Maine when really it had more to do with my own gender identity and how I... Um, while I do identify as an auntie, I also identify as a sir. And I needed to find a way to communicate my gender identity, and I hadn't had a good way of doing it until recently. Um, when I was a teen, or even younger than that, I described myself as a boy trapped in a girl's body, but that wasn't accurate. But that was the language I had at that time and that age. As a young adult, even up until probably recently, I described myself as a, a woman body, man brain. <laughs> um, also, not super accurate, but it was a way for me to talk about it. Uh, recently, in one of the queer groups that I'm in, um, I saw someone make the effort to break down different uh, gender identities and what they're named and also provided the flags that are associated with different ones. And I didn't think I would have one of those because I don't identify as trans, I don't identify entirely as a woman, although I feel like I'm supposed to, but that's a different story. And in the course of this like week or so that the, that the person was sharing all these different identities, I came across a, a flag that sort of looked like the um, bisexual flag, but it had more muted tones and they had more lines, so more of a gradiated uh, color palette, I guess, between the pink, the the purple, and the blue, and um, it caught my eye, so I scrolled back, and when I scrolled back, I saw the words bi-gendered, and just from the name alone, it clicked into place for me. I was like, ooh, I bet this is my thing, and then I read the direct, uh, the direction, and then I read the definition, and it's basically a person that identifies as both male and female, or both woman and man, despite body. So I guess this might put me in a trans category, although in in what I've been reading so far and in all of my engagement the last few years with other trans people and in trans readings, I didn't feel like I hit the, what word can I use for this? Um, Like the tenets. (laughs) That's not the right word, but that's a word that is I'm going to use. I think, I think you'll get what I'm saying. Like, I don't hit the major tenets of general trans identity, so it never fit right. It never made me feel comfortable to describe myself as that because I felt like, if anything, it was 
um, taking away from other trans identities and trans experiences. And I don't ever want to be um, guilty of doing something like that. But I understand that I had something going on with my gender that I didn't have language for. And um, so, like I said, I'm going to talk about it more in depth on my other show, By Furious. But in the same way within mixedness, that until you have a terminology that fits you, sometimes you're kind of grasping at straws for like, who am I? I'm not black enough to be black. I'm not white enough to be white. I'm not Asian enough to be Asian. I'm not a Latino enough or Latina enough to be a Latino or Latina. Like this stuff happens to us. And, and that's why sometimes we, we create these hybrid terms for us, like me with black and knees. And um, some of the other guests on the show have been Chimacan, Filibino, Blacksican, Blackarican, different things like that, right? Um, so throughout the show, people have named themselves as different um, hybrid terms of their multiple ethnic groups. And in doing that, you kind of feel a different sort of ownership of your identity. Um, that doesn't change that you are equally a person, like in my case, a black person and an Asian person. And even though I wouldn't feel comfortable doing this, technically a white person, British white person, um, the hybrid terminology makes me feel more comfortable in my mixed identity this is just a version of that it just happens to do with gender and so now that I have this term I feel a little bit closer to whole and it's given me something to to research that's been my biggest problem is I didn't really have a way to research it um, in the same way that I described last week that I couldn't put the right words into the googles to understand what was going on with my microphone uh, my headset radio station problem until last week, I couldn't put the right terms in the Googles to come up with something that would describe what my deal was. And in seeing that in the Facebook group that I was in, it uh, it's broken open something for me. And um, I feel happier and more comfortable now that I have something to explore. So that is actually the primary reason behind how Mixed Girl Maine didn't feel comfortable. Even though in friendship, if someone describes me as a girl or they're like, hey, girl, or something like that, that doesn't really bother me because it also happens on the male side. I have a lot of platonic male friendships in which I am the the structure of our friendship is, is less like a male female friendship. It's more like boys, my boys, they're they're my boys, I'm their boy, um, which you can see in my other podcast, Blurred Comics, uh, my co-host on that show, Blurred Vision. And I have known each other since we were eight years old. And um, we, the dynamic of our friendship is more like male friends than it is necessarily like platonic male female friends. Um, he does call me girl or lady sometimes, but he also calls me bruh and boy and main. So we, it's not like he's not seeing my whole thing, but because he interchanges all of those gender terms for me, I feel like he gets me better than a lot of the other people that are in my life because they see the physical and describe the physical. Or if I have that kind of male style friendship with them from childhood, um, they see that. Uh, but Blurred Vision gets it, I think, better than most people in my life in that he will interchangeably call me girl, boy, bruh, main, lady <laughs> within one you know conversation and it all makes sense and it all clicks together. Um, and so I was just trying to find something like that that allowed me to communicate it in a way that made sense to me so that it was clear when I described it to other people so that I could get away from things like describing myself as a woman with a man brain, which never felt right, kind of felt problematic, but I didn't have another way of saying it. I couldn't use two spirit because I'm not an indigenous person. And I don't think even that would accurately describe myself if I were to co-opt it, which of course I will never do. Um, so by gendered is the one that's hitting and I, um, I'm excited about finally having something to describe what I've been experiencing since I was young. I can remember, I have memories as young as five years old, trying to tell people that I was a boy, even though I really wasn't saying I was a man or a male. I was more saying that I didn't want to play the mommy when we played house with my cousins. They were all boys. I was a girl. I always played the daddy and I made my boy cousins play the mommy and the babies. Um, when I was a teenager, I told a preteen, I told my dad, I didn't ever want to get married because I never wanted to be a wife. I wanted to be a husband. So I, I had 
things I was saying early on that indicate I've always known I've had something going on. I just didn't have the language for it. And, and um, I found the ways that I could describe it at the different age groups. I don't want to be the mommy. I want to be the daddy. I don't want to be a wife. I want to be a husband. I'm a boy trapped in a girl's body, like I used to say as a teenager in high school, or I'm a woman with a man's brain. Um, so while I do use the moniker, while I do use the auntie, that's intentional too, because I have more of an auntie vibe than an uncle vibe, but I do have masculine honorifics like sir or mix, which is gender neutral uh, versus Mrs. or miss or something like that. Um, or ma'am. Yeah. I, I am a sir more than I am a ma'am. I am an auntie more than I am an uncle. And I'm bi-gendered in my identity. Or at least that seems to be the closest to what I have been feeling lately. And I'm working my way through that identity right now. Um, so Mix Auntie Maine feels natural now. And it doesn't bother me every time I say it like Mix Girl Maine was, was doing. And that has actually been happening for um, a little over a year where it's actually bothered me. Uh, but I have I had been making jokes about wishing I had called myself Mix Auntie Main instead of Mix Girl Main um, early on in the show. But by then I had already been using my social media handles as Mix Girl Main for for ages. It was my personal handle. It was how I identified before. Um, yeah, and I used to do things like sp always spell girl with a U because I needed it to be not girl but girl. You know. It was a whole thing. It's been a whole journey, he, she's, and they's, but I'm I'm getting closer to it, and I feel a lot better about that. Um, the only other thing I really have to talk about today, it's not that it's not that big a deal, is that last week when I mentioned that y'all are going to be able to hear a radio station playing in the recording, as it turns out, nobody heard that, and I was having a conversation with Auntie Teresa, one of the other mixed aunties, and she mentioned to me. No, I didn't hear it. And so then I played it in my car and I didn't hear it either. So it turns out I can only hear it in my headphones when I'm recording. I can kind of hear it now, but it's not that heavy. Um, I'm also using a different computer now. And um, so maybe that has something to do with it. But I still need to get like a shielded cable to cut that down. But I can still hear it. It's just a lot lower than it was last week. Last week it was incredibly loud. And um, I didn't want to lose out on the episode. Because I think you could still hear it. Turns out you could hear the whole thing and I sounded like a crazy person. Um, so, yeah. I get really strange about the audio because I know that I'm limited in my sound dampening abilities where I live. Um, and that just partic that, that made me real sensitive that I could hear the radio station because it was like, I don't want every episode that I live in Houston to sound like the TSE radio station or the KCOH radio station. So, anyways, sorry. I probably made you like lean in to try to hear the radio station you couldn't hear it but that I didn't know because every time I listened to it on my computer I could hear it um but when I listened to it in my car I couldn't so there you go um the only other thing there's something I want to talk about oh my gosh is there something I want to talk about so bad that I'm so excited about and so giddy but it's going to be a very long process until the payoff for what this thing is will happen and so I don't want to jinx it, I guess, and I don't want to kind of put the cart before the horse, but this is a, a Charmaine Fury thing, not necessarily a militantly mixed thing, although it's because of militantly mixed that it is a thing. And I'm so excited. I want to talk about it, but I can't talk about it, but I want to talk about it, but I can't talk about it, so I'm not going to talk about it, but I'm excited. Um, it actually kind of revamped my excitement last week when I got the, or when I heard about it. And then I got to talk further about it, and now I'm extra excited. But this is a lengthy process. It's something that's going to take a few months. And so, um, yeah, I can't talk about it, but I'm excited about something related to Militantly Mixed. And that's all I guess I can say about that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, and this is just going to be a short one today. I don't know yet if I'm going to take my mental health hiatus in December. I should... The problem is that because I own a retail space right now, I don't, and it'll be the holiday season, I don't think December is going to be very restful. So it might not count as a mental health hiatus. So I may just stick it out through December. I haven't decided yet. We'll see what happens based off of um, the amount of episodes I have recorded and how I feel during that time. It's going to be a really busy month, I assume, because it's been busy so far and we haven't even hit the holidays yet. 
Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, don't forget to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Militantly Mixed. We are also on Facebook, facebook.com slash Militantly Mixed. And if you want to join the private Facebook group, you can go to facebook.com slash Militantly Mixed Podcast. Adding the podcast will get you to the group. Just Militantly Mixed full stop will get you to the page, the public page. Um, you do have to answer a question about being mixed to get into the group and um, for now, when you post, it has to go through admin approval, which is either myself or Jonathan Davis um, or Teresa Stovall, because we had some people trying to date and we had some people trying to sell stuff internationally. So that I want to make sure that this is a safe space for the mixed folks that listen to the show. And I don't want you to be inundated with things that you didn't necessarily sign up for when you signed up for the page. Um, so that's why we have the page protected, um, the post protected now. And that's pretty much it. If you would like to support the show, because as you know, Militantly Mix is a fan-sponsored podcast, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash militantly mixed and donate as low or subscribe as low as a dollar a month to as high as anything you wish. There's different reward levels depending on what you choose. And if you choose at least the $5 a month level, you can get access to the video versions of the episodes that I do or the interviews that I do, um, starting with episode 142. Um, I really enjoy that that's available. I don't know how many people on the Patreons have started to watch them yet, but um, hopefully I'll start to get some insight on that soon as to whether or not it's even a really good reward. For folks that are waiting for their pins, their stickers, or their postcards, I have written them. I have written out the envelopes. I just need to get down to the post office so I can get the stamps. Um, but your rewards are going to start coming. I know some of y'all have been rating since before I left LA. And a lot of that just has to do with the chaos of my life this particular year. But I'm getting closer to being able to send. I also owe some folks some t-shirts that I bought last year and have been sitting. They're sitting in a box and I need to unpack that box and then I'll get you your t-shirts. Um, that sounds terrible and I'm embarrassed that I had to say that. And I can hear the horns and the drumline from TSU. So on that note, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So see you all next week with a regular episode. And don't forget to be your mixed ass selves. Peace, y'all. Militantly Mix is a main hustle media podcast produced and hosted by me, Charmaine Fury. Music is by David Bogan, The One. You can follow us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Militantly Mixed. If you'd like to become a sponsor of Militantly Mixed, please go to patreon.com slash militantly mixed for monthly sponsorship or paypal.me slash militantly mixed for a one-time only donation. And if you like what you hear on Militantly Mixed, please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to be your mixed ass self. Main Hustle Media. Turn your side hustle into your main hustle.